So what do you guys think? I mean, I think we should do a walk through the tool, talk a little bit about the features, the features of what you guys have coming uh, in the future. So what do you guys think? Yeah, sure. Let's get into it. Awesome. Amazing. So, I mean, we'll just share your screen. I have a few questions. Um, and yeah, let's do it. Yeah, uh, we actually have um, an exciting update going out today. Uh, awesome. I'll give you guys a, a sneak peek at it right now. Awesome, bro. What is this? Oh, you're you're about to see. You're about awesome. to see. Awesome. Um, here, let me share my screen. G. All right. Um, can you see this? Yes. So this is what the, the tool looks like um, right now. So you have, you know, your, your import screen, you have your projects on the left, um, bounties, you can link your GitHub account. And if you log out, this is kind of the login screen that you see. Um, so that's how it looks now. And this is what we're going to be releasing today. Um, wow. Wow. So we have a new interface. Yeah, new new interface. So right now I'm not logged in. Um, so you can still sort of see the whole app. Um, you can look at the what the latest improvements are. You can see kind of different news items and wow. um, access resources and stuff. But let me go ahead and log in here. GitHub. Okay, and now I can see my projects over here. Um, and just like before, I can look through bounties um, look at my GitHub repos, import those. And, you know, we've been doing find the bug challenges recently. So we're going to be posting those here as well when there's new ones. Uh, but yeah, this is the change we're going to be releasing today and a few hours actually. Really cool, bro. Really cool. And congratulations on the work. This seems and looks super useful besides being beautiful. Um, I think most of the people here in the already know you guys but for just for everyone that's seen on youtube audit wizard is a, i think we can call it a online id and what is the, what is the perfect definition yeah i would i would say it's a a security focused online ide um ide is probably not the best, the best word yeah. uh because you you can't actually you can't actually write code. Um, you're just reviewing code. But um, really the, the inspiration of it is, you know, so I've been doing security work for... Uh, Quite a while. You know, eight, yeah, eight, nine years at this point. And um, through all that time, I was using developer tools to analyze code. And they're just... They're specifically engineered and designed for developing the code. So I've always wanted like di different quality of life features and, um, you know, little Im improvements and, and different ways of doing things that you'd want when you're reviewing code that you haven't written. So that's, um, that's why we built auto wizard. That's what we have in mind. Uh, so yeah, you can also, um, I just wanted to, you know, just, just to show how fast it is to work with it to itself. Can you go to the, the main page where we can see all the contests going on right now? Yeah. Awesome. And let's, I don't know, let's, uh, work on salty.io. So let's open it. So this is how fast it is for you to dive into code. You know, imagine having to clone the repository, setting up leader. Mitrio, whatever, having to copy whatever parts of the code to AI to kind of understand what's happening. Uh, Audit Wizard just gives you that, you know, by default in your hand, you know. And, and I think that because we're using the dev environment is a little bit, um, I don't know, let's go on it. That's important. Yeah, I mean, because of the dev environment. I mean, if you do that on production, uh, it's super fast, you know, uh, um, um, but it's an amazing well, way, you know. 
we had a, a bug recently with our um, project hydration, so we had to disable it. So now, now I'm waiting for basically the entire thing to to Let, clone. Let's 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 just go for the production uh, website. What do you think? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Just because what everybody's gonna use. So right in there, you can log in with Google, GitHub, you know, so some cool things you can do. You can just input a contract address or GitHub repository on the address bar. And right in there, it's going to import all the code, you know. Um, let's take a look on Salty. And you see how fast it is to load this thing? Like, imagine having to clone these again, you know, Slither, setting up everything. Can you go over the source folder and the DAO, um, DAO, DAO folder? And then we have the DAO.saw. Can you open that? And let's go over AI. So, of course, we see this as a DAO contract, okay? So we can kind of know what it's doing, but you have the possibility of just talking to the code. I mean, this is amazing. So you're going to have, okay, how the code works, what's happening here right now. And I have a question. Like, recently I was trying to deal with uh, AI thing, you know, so trying to work with models. How you guys manage the whole token thing, you know, because it seems a little bit complicated in how much text I need to send to get my answer. Yeah, um, this was actually quite a big problem until recently. Um, you know, uh, OpenAI kind of increased their token limits I see. drastically um, and also reduced their prices at the same time, which was great. But we were hitting this issue of you know, files like this, well, this one's, you know, 388 lines, so it's not that big, but if you had, like, a flattened contract, if you take all of these imports and you flatten it, you're going to have thousands of lines of code. Yeah. And if you give that to the AI, um, it consumes a whole lot of tokens. Um, and especially if you're chatting with it, because when you're when you're chatting, you're, like, providing... Uh, all of that context over and over again of the entire chat. So um, it's just kind of a, a brute force method right now of we do just provide the entire file and the token limit is is higher now so we can, we can deal with it. Uh, but in the future, what we're going to be looking to do is basically vectorize the entire project here. Because right now when you're speaking to the AI, it really just has the context of this one file. Um, but in the future, we'll kind of take every individual file here, vectorize it, and also give that as context to the AI. So really cool. It can it can reference all of these things and know what they are. Um, and you click yeah. on inspect, so we take a look on that. So if I'm not mistaken, on my on mainnet contracts, I can see the slots, right? I can see the values for, or I can only see for now the. What information is stored in each slot? Yeah, so um, if we had imported this by contract address, we'd see the on-chain values right here. Really cool. Um, this is just from GitHub, so we don't have that. Perhaps in the future, we could um, allow you to kind of point this file to an address so that we can go fetch the on-chain values. Um, that's an improvement we'll eventually make but right now, what you can see is the storage slots. So if you're curious about the layout of, you know, the DAO contract and um, all of these sort of variables it has, uh, yeah, all of these, you can see where they sit in the slots. Most of them take up the entire slot except for, you know, the first one. So this is useful if you're curious about gas optimization or anything that has to do with the slots. Awesome, bro. Can you click on IST? Yeah, so we have the types, uh, you know, uh, really cool. Can we can we open the south.io file? And we also have some cool hotkeys, right, that we can use uh, to jump between different files and everything. Salt.sol, sorry, the main folder. Just go, yeah. go down a little bit. Oh, there we go. Yes. And pretty much we can see simple... It looks like a simple ERC20 contract. I was trying to find a maybe managed wallet, um, something fun that we can run the, the scanner on. The wallet? Managed wallet.
Really cool, guys. Really cool. And it wallet. Here right. we go. Test. I mean, right up, just right above. Like, if you go back on the same contract you were before, the South of Saul is right above that contract all on the file list. Because uh, I think this is a test file, file, right? Oh, yeah. Right there. Right above. Managed wallet. Can you click on that? On the. Oh, yeah. I opened the test. Awesome. No problem. Okay. Nice. Now, can we run this scanner to see if we. Yeah. Uh, just if there's anything there because it's dealing with wallets. Let's see if it will run. This does have a few missing imports. Guys, there's any plans that we're going to be able to send uh, integrations, create integrations ourselves with different applications? Not for now, right? Like a custom made extension? Yeah, like I want to do my own, you know, pyrometer thing and I want to use it, uh, you know. But I don't think that's going to be the case for now, right? Until we have maybe a local version or something like that. Yeah, not yet. Um, I mean, all those things we'll be adding our, ourselves over time. Um, but we are going to be moving more towards like a open community contribution model. Awesome. For different things. And um, we're sort of exploring what that's going to look like right now. I don't know exactly if that's going to be uh, extensions or if it's going to be uh, something else. Like what we were thinking about right now is we added this uh, testing tool recently. Um, and you ha we have in here POC templates. Mm -hmm. um, so we were thinking that in the future, it's sort of the community can you know, right now you can you can save your own. You can take a test, and you could you can save your own template from a test, and then you can sort of reuse that. So we're thinking that in the future, you know, the community you can save your templates, and you can share them with other people, and we can build up sort of a, a catalog that people can can look at. Um, awesome. Oh, one question that I have for you guys is regarding the detectors that we run today. I don't know how you guys approached of analysis from the Slither standpoint and from the AI standpoint, well, my question is related to every week we have new new hacks, new attacks, and those can be, you know, uh, broken down to steps and turned into detectors. You guys plan to implement kind of, you know, uh, st static analysis because in that case, I mean, it would help a lot with ongoing projects, you know? Yeah. Um, or this is a little bit off because it's more like a bot racing thing. No, actually, um, if you if you recall, um, at an ETH Global Hackathon a few months ago, we built this project as a as a team called Spyglass. Uh, and essentially, what it what it does is it it gives you a interface for writing these rules like so right now if you want to i mean let's look at slytherin for example this is an extension of slither uh the pessimistic guys did this and essentially what they did was they created a few detectors here right like look at this one yeah so they had to create this whole repo initialize all this stuff figure out how to write this and you know implement it so this is this is kind of uh not simple but we're able to just like take what they did there and add it here to the slither scans i understand uh, so you guys going to release your own detectors basically yeah so what what uh spyglass allows you to do is is write those yourself so in the same vein of like allowing the community to kind of build their own resources and share them um, we'll essentially have a system here where you can write a slither rule and we're going to kind of break it down to be a lot more simple than what you have here. Wow, that's really, really cool. Yeah, so you could have like this, just this detect function. Um, so you just write this and then we'll handle everything else. What is the la what is the language? It's going to be Solidity or C or JavaScript or Spyglass? Well, 
Yeah, so this is, these are defined in Python for Slither rules. And for for Spyglass, um, we have a couple different mechanisms, right? You can, so you can look through the AST and you can write rules that kind of uh, traverse this and look for patterns. Um, really? So that can, that can just be like JavaScript. And um, then you can also, you know, write Slither in, in Python. And then a third thing we have is actually AI prompts. And you can chain all these things together. So you could have a Slither rule, and then you can prompt AI, and AI will give you sort of like a yes or no based on your, your question. And you can filter down from there. So you could have, you could actually add more power. So like, here, let me go to... Um, let me go to something here we can look at you know slither scan so there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in here mm -hmm. um and this is a pretty simple contract this is what 329 lines it probably doesn't have all of these vulnerabilities here that are mentioned um so there's a lot of false positives and that's a big problem with uh static code analysis in general so if you could then if you could chain that with ai and have the AI kind of filter out, um, you know, take a look at these things and then look at the code. And if it gives you a high confidence level that, yeah, this thing definitely is a false positive, you can have it filter out. Um, or you can have like other conditions in there that you'd want to consider as part of your scanner. So that's kind of what, what the future would look like. You can chain those things together and it's really easy to make them from scratch. Really cool, bro. Uh, one thing that I wanted to show people was how fast also is it is for us to import something from from Etherscan. So maybe we can open some of these DEXs, just get a contract in there, one of those that are go, you know, maybe DEX tools or something, and just copy the address of the token or something and, and paste it. So we can see how Dex fast tools. that is. Yeah. All right. Find the contracts. Yeah, just go, click on home and let's go for, I think there's a. Also, let's get something on Ethereum. Did you grab something random? Yeah, we can get like byte, like byte up blue, like could be, maybe, I don't know, something. Uh, yeah, this one or. No. I'm interested in Elmo. Oh, Elmo is also there, man. All right. Uh, where do we find the contract address? You see there. You also, you guys are also working with Solana. Oh, that's on Solana. Yeah, not yet actually. I I think we have plans to explore it. Awesome. So you have the contract address there. You see by it, right right below Uniswap P two. Uh, yes. So. Yeah, so there's a couple ways you can do it. You can just take this whole URL if you want, or you can just copy the... Um... Can I use ENS address at this point? It's a great question. Uh, I would say no. We I don't think we're resolving ENS addresses yet. Awesome. Um, Something that you guys can do. Indeed. Yeah. I wonder if um, many smart contracts have uh really hard to come by yeah i don't i don't know they've ever seen a smart country with an ens address there we go so this is this is how fast you know you can load this project so sometimes you want to even buy something you know you just want to take a look to see if the, there's anything obvious in the code that can help you to make a decision in there so can we run the scanner try to run the scanner uh yeah. joe see if there's anything there A lot of stuff down here. Awesome. You see? So, yeah, you can see this is all, these are all like the libraries at the top. So there's not any findings. And then once you get to the actual contract. That's why uh, the confidence, what determines that the confidence is low? Some sort of AI or, this is, com this is coming from Slither, right? Yeah. So there, so you have different uh, severities of findings. So we could focus on just the high, which is all this red stuff. Um, 
and then, and I have the details for each one of the lines, right? So I have, yeah, so he entrance scene transfer, confidence mediums. Yeah, a lot of reentrance. So you can see right, right in there is not really trustable code or most likely a fork of a fork of a fork. Uh, uh, this is how useful. Can you can we talk a little bit to the code to see, you know, if there's any differences? So let's go over AI. Um, and let's just, can you explain me the differences between these and some classical ERC20? Or maybe how does that contract and those user phones a great question. Oh yeah, let's let's ask it that first. Let's talk about the transfer function. Well, so again, we're speaking to the code, and also this is uh, you'll have to set up VS Code, set up everything. Uh, you can just start working. And I think recently, uh, InfoSec, the InfoSec team found a bug uh, using the Audit Wizard. Uh, there's some off yeah. for you guys, you know. Guys, if you guys want to make any questions, I'm going to invite everyone to speak, okay? Yeah, so we can kind of go through what it said here. Um, we'll check in the so conditions. We're looking at transfer, yeah. So check some conditions at first. Um, checks if trading is allowed. It's just breaking down this code and, and like, yeah, it's really useful. Looking at, yeah, looking at this is not Im immediately the easiest thing to read. Um, but here it's like breaks it down into the pseudo code and into the logic. One question, Joe, I, this, I, in my head, this would be a little bit complicated to implement. Can I ask something along the lines of? Can you explain me line three three five to the AI, and she will understand. He will understand that that required in there. If this works, this is gonna be fucking really cool. AI ten tends to uh, have trouble with the exact line number. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, I understand. I mean, this is not how he's storing the text, you know. But this is something anyway. Uh, uh, you guys can take a look in the future. Not not super important. I think um, once we vectorize the whole project, it will be able to actually um, look at a very specific line because you could see here it looked at line three three four instead of three three five. Interesting. But it does do it does do a good job of uh, breaking it down though. Really, really cool. I mean, uh, can we click on graph? We, did, we haven't seen graph yet. And I was even talking to Brandon, like, so really the visual developer is not very good, not very friendly. Uh, would be really nice to have a graph tool, you know. Um, like, look at this, like, this is, uh, this is totally the visual developer, right? Um, yeah, essentially. Um, so both the Solidity visual developer and, and our tool use Surya on the back end, which is a, a graph generator. I see. Consensus, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. They, they, they made it. Um, and we extended it a little bit. Like if you, these are all functions, right? And if you just wanted to click on it, you can, you can see what nice. the, the function is and we can, we can go navigate to it even. Um, but yeah, actually, um, we're going to be improving this with our own sort of interactive graph system and i'll i'll give you some alpha on on what that's going to look like awesome so essentially what you have here is a not super well organized um this graph of these function calls so if you look at this the question is where where should i start you care probably about public external functions as sort of the entry point. Yeah. And then you want to see, you know, from left to right, like the call stack and how it gets deeper. That's not really apparent how you do that here. Um, like where is the transfer function? There it is. Transfer. Uh, you know, but it has all this other stuff in the way that is read only functions and transfer just sitting there amongst them. So, um, 
in the future, we're kind of designing our own graph system. So we're going to be moving away from Surya and um, organizing it from the external entry points and making it so that you can actually zoom in here and you'd see the lines of code rather than having right. to, you know, click, click it and go navigate to it. Um, so you can see here, like, you can read the code and then see what line is going to jump down to here. And then you can zoom in and you can read the code here. So you don't have to look at this giant wall of text and try and navigate it. You can look at this graph and understand how everything interacts and still see what the code looks like. That's really cool. And one question that I have for you is what happens in the tech tests uh, session? We have, besides inspect, we have tests. Uh, what happens in there? Yeah, so we do need to pick a Foundry project. So that is the one limitation we have right now. Uh, Gotta be Foundry. Yes, it must be a Foundry project. But you can see here, like I have a few test files. And I can I can add my own tests as well. All those in that work. To... Sorry? All those that work. I mean, you're just creating your file? Yep. So I just... sold. It created a test, um, and I could put something basic here that would. And we do a re return true or something. Yeah. Require true. Let's see. Save that. Uh, right. Oh yeah, that didn't compile. <laughs> no. I'll delete it. Basically, I can run my tests inside the tool true right and also work oh, yeah. and change them i'll actually just copy and paste this test oops i needed to all right well we can start by running this i'll show you that this existing yeah, we could see that it ran, and we can look at the trace. Um, cool. Yeah, I think this looks a little bit nicer than uh, the just wall of text you get from. Yeah, the I, command line. Um, I wonder. You guys don't have to answer right? but I wonder how you do that on the on the code if you're just using a machine to run that test. Uh, like some sort of Docker instance getting the prompt or it's simpler than that. But you don't have it to actually, it's actually more complicated than that. Um, okay. So one of our philosophies is to have deep integrations with our tools. So we, we've avoided up to now, um, like running foundry and command line and then just spitting the result back out at you yeah okay and we, we do the same thing for slither uh and all the tools that we're going to be integrating will, will operate the same way but basically uh well for slither we just wrote uh um some code in python to use the actual slither code base awesome. rather than yeah calling it as a command line tool so we interface with it directly uh that's how we're able to do things like wow there's some there's some issues with Slither. Like if one of the detectors has an error, then your entire scan fails. Wow. So we actually catch we run the detectors individually, and if any of them fails, we just kind of catch that failure. Um, but for Foundry, we actually forked their code base so that we could integrate directly with it and run the tests. Wow, bro, dude, um, oh, fucking. I mean, it is much safer yeah. too because you're not dealing with you know silk prints and everything. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, I mean, I thought you guys were doing something much simpler. Now I understand what you mean. Really nice. I mean, anything else you wanna go on talk about? Some cool feature. You know what I was missing? Uh, a change log, but seems like you guys implemented that in this new AI, right? Um, yeah, we have this here. Yeah. The latest improvements. So you can see, uh, everything we've done, uh, added a lot of stuff actually just in the, the past few months. There's a, there's a couple of features we didn't talk about. Um, 
So you have the ability to like add a finding, right? So if you find uh, you're looking at Yeah, you can view the report, right? Yeah. So if I'm like looking at this and I wanna say like something bad happened here. And I can give it a severity and that's it's high you know, the code that I've highlighted, it sets that as the location. And then I could I could have AI generate my description for me. So I want to be a little lazy. Nice. So Yeah, it'll I mean, I didn't give it a very good title, so it'll probably just give me a very generic description of what a um vulnerability could be. Also it likes to write a lot. So this will keep going for a little bit. You know what would be cool? But but you know, just a crazy idea, okay? Don't take this as some sort of but if I, let's say, Code Arena has a new contest, right? And whenever I click on inspect the code straight from Audit Wizard, besides having all these tools, I also had some sort of chat system. You see everybody that's maybe auditing that cro that project at that point. Maybe I can build some connections in there, exchange ideas. You know, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, we're exploring collaboration features as well. Um like one thing is we we recognize a lot of people are not working solo necessarily they're yeah. working in small groups or pairs uh and also do want to sort of interact with the community on on kind of contests and things like that I, i've seen on twitter a lot of people share like here's a graph or like a diagram of how this contest works you know uh to get you started and I think it'd be great to people people just to have like an open forum of sorts. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that could be in, in Auto Wizard, but either way, I, I like the idea of, you know, if you want to audit a contest with, you know, someone else, you can sort of link up Audit Wizard with with their version of Audit Wizard, right? So if they make any changes, you can see it and you can chat between each other. Yeah, this would be really cool. I mean, I can totally see people bonding over that and going over code together, you know. Collaboration here is really strong. Just because, yeah, yeah how frustrating how they can... Bro, really, so, cool. really cool, keep on. Yeah, one one more thing is, so once we've created a finding, um, we can actually ask the AI to generate a proof of concept wow. test for us. I'll take a second here. Um, in the future, this will kind of generate a test directly in the test tool, so you don't have to copy and paste it. So they're going to generate the, the POC itself? Yeah. Wow. So we have this POC now, and if we wanted to add a new test, then we just kind of copy and paste it in there. This is available today? Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, it is. I, I have some compilation issues, so... Yeah, it's uh, it's not perfect. Uh, it helps a lot. So you, yeah, it helps. Like I have all the boilerplate, right? So I just had to adjust it a little bit to get it to compile. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool tool. And then you, a couple other things. You have like a notepad. So like, if you want to write a note that's not a finding, you can do that. Or if you want to just like, um, bookmark code and say like, um, to do, what nice. is this function you know and then that's just there um to remind me or if i want to just remember like add a bookmark to the code to know like where to come back to and then the last thing which i think is really cool is we have this whiteboarding tool nice um how do we access that okay that's you guys need to make that 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 to a little bit more i mean just put it besides tasks whiteboard, I think it's going to be more visible. I mean, it could be me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Everybody listening. Can you guys put it on the chat? Yeah, we have this like section over here that's like your your personal like notes and and this is these are basically the things where you can write your own kind of content awesome. as you audit. Um, but you can make simple diagrams here. You know, there's I mean, a very, very interesting question from Helmi. I mean, you guys plan to implement integration with the Solidity docs. So whenever I go over a, some Solidity function, I can get some uh, 
context from the function itself. Oh, uh, so you mean like, uh, yeah, let me go back to another project. Let me try salty. So you mean like, um, when you're hovering over. Yeah, like call or, you know, something like that. And we can see definitions from the solidity level. I mean, this is just not, not yeah. mandatory, but I don't know. I don't think even Visual Studio Code does that. Yeah. So we have like, like this comment, for example, I don't know if this is in doc format, but, um, yeah, ideally, like when you hover over it, you would see that that's something we're actually going to be working on soon. Uh, and right now, one thing we don't have as well is control click that people have asked for us if you, oops, if you hold control yeah, and I click on. Not so simple, media. right? Not so simple to build, right? Yeah, it should, it should navigate you there. So we're actually working on like the underlying logic to support that. And that will also allow us to do these things. Like when you hover over something, it will give you the peak view of it and it will give you, um, like the doc description of it. So those are things we're working on right now. One question that I have for you and a bet also a little bit unrelated, sorry for all these unrelated questions, how you guys are keeping safe and people injecting some weird JavaScript code over no, uh, the input and everything. I wonder how you guys are escaping, uh, you know, everything. Yeah. Um, so we use, we use react and we, uh, you know, are, are using the, the built-in mechanisms to prevent, awesome. you know, XSS and all that. And, and, you know, we've done our own sort of security uh, assessment. Sorry. Security assessment. Yeah, we do our own sort of internal review, but we've also gotten a penetration test done. Um, and any of the small findings from that, we've we've mitigated as well. So we're pretty confident in the level of security of it. Um, that said, if you're if you're still sort of on the fence about um, sort of importing something and and writing your your vulnerability data in, there's actually an option here to import something in private mode. So, um, you know, we have really good security uh, on this application. I've been doing security for, for eight years professionally. So, awesome. um, I, you know, I, I feel pretty confident when I say that, but if you feel like you need extra assurance, you can enable this private mode and basically what that a lot, yeah, basically what it allows you to do is you import a project and the findings, the notes, um, basically where was I? I was hoping a random one. Basically everything over here, these three things, whatever you write things in here, whatever you add notes, whatever you add a finding, um, all that stuff is encrypted by a key in your browser that we don't have access to. I see. Um, so you get end to end encryption of your vulnerability data. Um, so yeah, you don't have to, if you have any paranoia at all about levels of security or potential compromise, that's an option for you. Really interesting, bro. I mean, if you want to go back to showing the, the trial work, I would take a look at that. Pretty cool. The, the what, sorry? The, the draw board. Oh yeah. The whiteboard. Yeah. Here's my beautiful drawing here of two circles. Um, you can also drag and drop images in here. Um, and maybe in the future we can add a library of, you know, elements, um, depends on if people are interested in it. And I think there's also, so this is, um, Excaladraw is what this library is called. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a collaboration feature too. So perhaps there's demand in the future and, and anyone listening you know, let us know if this is something you'd be interested in. But this demand in the future, we could set it up so that when you're collaborating with someone else on a on a project, you can actually have an interactive drawing session between you two. Wow, I mean, everybody would love that for sure, bro. There's no question about it. Um, awesome, uh, amazing, bro. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Like any other feature? I think that's it really. Um, 
the main thing is, you know, we're going to be releasing this new look today um, really cool. that we're all really excited about. Really cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, guys, congratulations on the work. You guys have been doing this and you guys has, have been improving and improving it. Uh, I can definitely see, you know, you guys have come a long way. So just keep on. Uh, the tool is becoming more and more useful and I'm quite sure that everybody will be using it pretty soon. Uh, just do the sheer amount of different code we're going to need to see and how fast we need to have our hands at it. So congratulations on that. Yeah, thanks. No problem, bro. I mean, this wasn't a great session, Brenda. I don't know if you have anything to add. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has a question, guys. Any questions to the team? And to your net, writing something. Awesome tool, really great. Yeah, guys, I think this is it. I'm going to try to push myself and put this video on YouTube today. And thank you guys so much for coming, okay? Awesome. Thanks for having us, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Joe. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, man. Bye.